about to go live, so we'll start again. Um, <clears throat> all right, uh, Sunday, if you if you was with us, we had an announcement saying that we would move inside the building Sunday. Um, Bonnie Henry has changed that. We're doing indoor meetings, so, but we're still going to plan on meeting outside. <clears throat> I talked to Susan. She's going to put up a couple tents. So anyway, also plan on doing the Lord's Supper. We, that's what the plan is. Um, may I ask you to pray for a sunshine? I noticed on my weather report, it said there's a chance of rain. Um, but just uh, let's concentrate everyone on, on praying that God would give us a good day. It's okay if it's overcast, but we really don't need to have um, uh, rain. You know, I might get wet and up. But anyway. Um, so we'll have the Lord's Supper. We're planning on using these uh, new cups, and you would take and pull this, and that would open for the wafer, and then we would pull this next one. So you have the plastic, and then you have a foil one, or it looks like foil, and that would open up for the regular so, uh, juice, juju juice. So anyway, <clears throat> uh, come, plan on being there, and uh, we'll just trust the Lord um, uh, to give us a good day. So as we begin tonight, uh, passionate uh, missionary pastor is only mentioned the Harbor Baptist Church um, in the 90 BC. I probably missed that. Like I said, I've only done this twice. Forgot to go live. Um, before we enter into our sermon, we are in 1 Corinthians 14. We'll be looking, be looking in verses 20 to 22, 20 to 22 tonight. And I just I was looking over the messages. Um, as I was in my studies, well, actually, I just finished uh, this uh, sermon and was looking at the messages because the Lord just laid something on my heart to take a look. And I wanted to, I went back further. I only got chapter 13 and 14 in front of me, but I wanted to call your attention to um, chapter 13, first of all, one through three, the, the title of the sermon was The Reason for Charity. And it was to reveal the truth that no matter what you are, your abilities without the love of God in your heart, you're nothing. Uh, you're no one without God's love. And then in 4 through 7 was the result of charity. And that was to examine uh, what Scripture is telling us about our relationship with God. That was the purpose. And then we had 8 through 10, the resiliency of cha uh, charity. Uh, and the purpose was to remind us as believers to focus on what lasts and not what passes away. No matter how great a gift may be, charity is better. Love, unconditional love of God is better. And then 11 through 13, the reliability of chatter, uh, charity. And uh, the purpose was to help us as believers to understand our need to grow in the Lord and in our ability to love as God loves, which we just mentioned was an unconditional love. <clears throat> um, and then we move to 14, and 1 through 4 was what God desires, our, uh, to draw our attention. Uh, the purpose was to draw our attention to God's desire that all believers should edify the body with all their lives, with everything in their lives. Then 5 through 8 was the necessary distinction. And that purpose of that one was to give light in the area of, of uh, the people desiring to speak tongues, the languages over prophesying, uh, preaching and teaching the word of God in the people's understanding. Um, and then we had uh, 9 uh, through 12 in 14, uh, uncertain sounds. That which uh, brings understanding, brings light uh, by enlightening the mind through communication of truth. 13 through 15, uh, the purpose is to edify, the purpose of speaking for every child of God, the purpose that we have speak is to edify those that hear the word by and the working of God in our lives. And of course, then we have uh, edification is by communication. Um, and we talked about God instructing the believer not to be overcome by emotions, but uh, by emotions to the point that, that they distract from communicating the truth. So what we have, <clears throat> if, if even if, as we go back further, uh, we have a progression uh, until we get into uh, where we are tonight, uh, which I find, uh, I love to go back and look at how God has, has taught us and, and, and given us understanding. So tonight, uh, the title is Things That Harm or Things That Harm the Body. And I believe God has given us this scripture for the purpose of helping us to understand three things 
that will harm the body of Christ. And in, the, in those three things, every believer has control over those areas of their lives. And so <clears throat> the first one is the lack of understanding spiritual truth is harmful or truths is harmful to the body. The lack of benevolence to the word of God is harmful to the body. And then the last one, the lack of believers with maturity or mature understanding is harmful to the body. And these are really very close, but there's some differences in there. And really, I get all this from verse 20. Let's read our passage, and then I'll give an introduction, and we'll go on. Verse 20 says, Brethren, be not children in understanding. That's a command. Howbeit in malice be ye, be ye children. That's a command. But in understanding, be men. And that's a command. So in this, we're talking about be not children, be ye children, be men. But in each one, he gives a prepositional phrase in understanding, in malice, and understanding. He's, he's commanding. All this is because of what's going before. He's talking to these people distinctly in chapter 14, which we don't know. He could have been talking to the same people right on. We don't know. But he told them, he said, follow after charity desire spiritual gifts, but rather that ye may prophesy. And then we get through all this commotion, all the commotion that's gone before, and he says, be, 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 be not children of understanding. Don't act like a little kid. Don't sit here and fight back and forth like a little child. He said, uh, how be it in malice be children? In other words, don't throw that temper tantrum. Don't, don't have that evil. A kid may get mad, but they'll forgive quick. Um, that was the thing about a child, childlike forgiveness. Um, is a wonderful thing. And then it says, but in, in understanding, be men, be mature, be men. And then it goes on in 21, it says, in the law it is written, with men of other tongues and other lips will I speak unto this people. And yet for all that, listen to what he just said. I want you to remember that because I'm going to come back to this. And yet for all that, will they not hear me, saith the Lord. Wherefore, tongues are for a sign not to them that believe, but to them that believe not. But prophesying serveth not for them that believe not, but for them that which believe. Um, so uh, let's go ahead and open up in a word of prayer. Father, we thank you again for this day. We thank you for your word. We ask now, Lord, you'd help us as we enter in, that you'd give me the ability to, to, to have singleness of mind, that I might be surrendered to the Spirit, that I might have uh, clarity of thought and speech. We ask for your blessings in Jesus' name. Amen. Paul gives uh, the brethren three commands by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit in, in verse 20. Uh, really what he's doing, he's fi finishing up his apologetic with the idea in mind. Catch this. Believer, it's time to grow up. That's what he's telling them. Uh, Paul has realized the problem with these men is really basically twofold. And, and you'll find these two problems typically go together. Uh, there's uh, the problem of immaturity and the one of uh, carnality. Typically, they always go together. Um, uh, these two problems, like I said, usually go together since one is, is basically a result of the other in a believer without understanding. And I, and I kind of throw that in there. I probably didn't need to, but Paul knows these problems must be dealt with. Uh, and the reason is since... Uh, immaturity in a believer, it keeps them from understanding spiritual truth. While carnality uh, will prevent these believers from growing spiritually into Christ's likeness. So we see where that conflict is. I mean, it, it just is, 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 is a double barrier. So you have to deal with this. These two issues, uh, when left alone and not dealt with, will allow emotions to rule, basically, and to rage uh, from which what happens is the malice he spoke about in the center uh, finds a uh, root to grow, is able to, uh, uh, in these individuals, oh, let me see, I want to say that. It, it grows in these individuals, which um, what that ends up happening, when you have immature and carnal Christians in a church, and this malice begins to grow, it begins to change the nature of the whole church. And, and the church begins to will begin to turn into a carnal church because what happened, we're all emotional creatures. And as you start striking those chords with each other, 
Well, isn't that the whole idea behind 1 Corinthians? You begin studying 1 Corinthians, this is exactly what their problem was. Um, uh, Paul gave these three commands, revealing the areas of weakness in these men desiring positions in ministry or positions of authority and power or prominence, if you would. Uh, Paul's command effectively renders these men unfit for ministry. Because <laughs> what he told them, they couldn't live up to at this point. Um, so they were unfit for ministry until these areas of conflict were resolved. These types of believers, the type that, that Paul has listed here in 20, they should concentrate on growing in Christ and not putting themselves forward in a ministry or seeking to, to elevate themselves. So with that said, and I, that was a long introduction, um, <clears throat> but I'll try to make the rest of it uh, quicker if I can. I don't know if that's possible. But anyway, let's go ahead. Um, so to start off with, these, the first point is the lack of understanding spiritual truths is harmful to the body. And, and he, he kind of goes into this in 20. Uh, Brethren, be not children in understanding. He said, you, 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 if in the end of it, he says, but in understanding, be men, be mature. Uh, carnality is, is the era of seeking after that, which uh, is not yours or is or as, as a group, uh, is not theirs to, to have in the will of God. It doesn't necessarily it's, it be wrong uh, for somebody to possess that, but it is if it's not what God would have for you. Uh, God doesn't want you to be a pastor and you seek to be pastor. God doesn't want you to be the song leader or the teacher or treasurer, or whatever it is, but yet you seek after that. Uh, that's uh, that's an error because what you're doing is you're, you're going against the will of God that's carnality. That's based in the flesh. There's another reason for your desire for that if God isn't moving you. Uh, see, maturity in Christ is never seeking after that which God does not desire for you. Uh, those seeking uh, to be mature, those thing, those people seeking uh, to grow in Christ, Christ's likeness, they don't run before God. They wait on him. They wait on him to move them and show them his will. You don't. You, if you run ahead of God, you're going to miss it all. Uh, he's telling them, he said, be not children in understanding. God is not leading you here. Maybe these people were going to be teachers and preachers or, or in places of prominence later, but they weren't ready at this point. I can remember, and I've said this before, remember people in school, they couldn't wait to leave school and some of them left early and they failed in the ministry and, and, and they backed up and, and tried to regroup. And the reason was, we tend to get ahead. We allow these emotions and stuff to, to move us. Be very careful. I, I've made the mistake over and over in my life, and I've been blessed in that God has uh, stopped me before I went too far. Um, but we don't press on before God because when we do that, uh, when we do that, our desires have motivated us for which we are not yet prepared. If God has not moved you to do something, you're not prepared to do it. That's a that's a key thing, um, uh, understanding in the will of God. If 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 you're moving ahead of God, if you're not waiting on Him, then you're out of His will, and you're not prepared for what's coming. You need to prepare. Some people are so impatient, but you need to understand, it's not what you want. It's according to God's will, and that's what He blesses our obedience to His will. So to wait on God, uh, we we've, we've kind of alluded to this. It takes patience and a knowledge uh, and understanding that God knows best for us. And he says, brethren, be not children. What about a child? I mean, uh, you, you ever play with a, a little kid? Man, you got about a minute and a half of attention, and then boom, he's somewhere else. And then you kind of, you got to kind of get animated and get his attention back, and you got about another minute, boom, he's gone again. God says, don't be children in understanding. Be ye men, be adults. Be willing to wait on God, have the patience, have the maturity to wait because God knows best. Um, those in Christ, as we mature, we learn to wait on God to reveal his desire for us. And, and that's, that's an invaluable characteristic, if I could say it that way, or trait. Learn to wait, learn to be patient, learn to, to abide where God has you. Um, when I see people that are discontent with their hair color or discontent with this or that, 
um, I always get nervous because I understand that's a sign of immaturity. It's a sign of not accepting what God has for you. And you have to learn. This is the way God has made me. This is the way uh, he is dealing with me at this point. This is where he wants me. Now, there is there is procrastination. There is dragging your feet. When God opens the door, go through it. But don't move before you're sure that that's what God wants you to do. In this particular area, too many believers have the understanding of children, um, especially when we talk about the Bible. Uh, they don't spend the time in the Word of God. They don't spend time reading it. They don't spend time praying. They don't spend time meditating. And, and it's not saying that I'm perfect. I'm not saying anybody's perfect. Well, what's the difference between an adult, a mature person, and an immature person? Let me tell you what it is. An adult realizes their responsibility and adheres to it. Now, they may not like it. You know, reading the Bible every day is not always um, a bubble gum and balloons. I mean, it's not always a party. Uh, sometimes you're tired. Sometimes you got stress. Sometimes you got other things. But it's still your responsibility. It's part of your relationship with God. It is, can I say it this way? It is a duty. And as an adult, you understand that and you do it whether you like it or not. I imagine if you talk to most people, they get up in the morning, go to work to make money to provide for their households. But it's not that they necessarily love their job. Some do. But they do it because it's a responsibility and duty to pay the bills, to feed the family, whatever. Um, uh, too many believers have the understanding of the Bible as a children do because they're not willing to discipline themselves. They're not willing to say, well, you know, this is what I got to do. It's my duty and my responsibility. These, I believe, the men they're talking about in chapter 14, I think some of these men were seeking positions they were either not called of by God or were not prepared at that point to take. Others may have been uh, possibly seeking a position of authority or glory um, because they wanted that to be uplifted. They want to be glorified or honored before men. Basically, I would say they sought after things after their own desires and not after the will of God. It was not after godliness. And so Paul gives this, and to me, this is a condemnation. This the, He was admonishing them in verse 20. Uh, he was telling them, um, you, you, you're seeking after what you should not at this point. Uh, when I think of this, and, I, and I'm not trying to um, make anybody feel bad or anything, because I don't really know what's going on in everybody's life, but I under, in my mind, um, I think too many people have not grown in Christ as God has designed and, and desired of them to grow. Um, and, and I asked myself this question. I said, why are believers growing crooked and weak and not strong and straight? And, and you say, well, what are you talking about? Well, I, if you've been around me long enough, you've heard me use the term pygmy Christians. And I think Christianity Day is full of, of pygmies. Um, and I'm not saying I'm a giant. I'm right there with the pygmies. I'm not saying I'm mature. I'm saying I'm growing in Christ. And I pray that the day I die, I'm still growing in Christ. Um, and I think that's the best we can seek for in this life. But their understanding of the word is weak, is what I'm talking about here. Why they're crooked and weak? Their understanding of the word is weak. They are more walking by emotions than they are by uh, the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Um, I, I really find it interesting that Paul's last command to these men was, he said, but an understanding be men. He said, be mature, be adults. So apparently, however they were acting, however they were acting here, and, and we get a, 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 a little shadow painted by Scripture, but we weren't really in the midst. But apparently how these people were acting, and, and you go back and read through the last two or three chapters, they, they were probably acting like big kids. I mean, there was a, a bunch of fists, not fist fights, but a bunch of fits being thrown back and forth. I can imagine some of them being on the ground like a little kid laying on his stomach and jumping and carrying on with his fist and his, his feet just kicking. But these men, I believe, had reacted as a child would when they were faced with these certain or with certain circumstances. 
Paul's command, um, commands recognize their behavior and attitudes were childish and immature. So, of course, I'm led to that when I look at this. See, these men's traits were not the caliber God desired for ministry, at least not that point in their life. Um, in case you don't know, ministry is about dealing with people, problems, in all sorts of conditions and areas of life. It's just the way it is. We deal with people. Uh, these uh, people here were unprepared for the ministry and its demands. Very simply, he knew that. Um, there's nothing more destructive than to put a child in a, in a ministry or somebody with a, with childlike uh, characteristics and, and being that immature in, in the ministry, dealing with people, because it's all reactionary. It's all reactionary. And what do you do? You destroy lives. You push people away from God. You just can't have that. You just can't have it in the ministry. And God wouldn't have these type of people in the ministry ministering for him. He just he doesn't call that type. I'm sorry. Um, he may, after they're prepared and matured a little bit, it could be a very good reason why God didn't call me when I was younger. Um, but the mature in Christ, if you're going to mature in Christ, you can do it two ways. Well, more than two, but I'll mention two. You'll, you'll do it by, uh, first of all, by reasoning. And, and when I say that, you need to understand, I'm not saying by the flesh. I'm saying you have to come to determination in your life. You know, if I'm, if, I, if I'm going to follow God, I'm going to have to do things of God. And so that leads to the second one, a direct decision of mine to seek after God. So if I'm going to be what God wants me to be, I'm going to have to do the things of God. That means, all right, I'm going to have to get up in the morning and read my Bible. I'm going to have to go to church. I'm going to have to spend time. You understand what I'm saying? So by reasoning it out and then a direct decision of your mind, I'm going to do this. I will do this. And it's still going to take uh, the, the power of the Spirit of God in your life and working, but these are some of our parts, our responsibility for growth. So the last, next one I want to, to get into is the lack of benevolence to the Word of uh, God is harmful to the body. Look in 21. It says, In the law it is written, With men of other tongues and other lips will I speak unto this people, yet for all that will they not hear me, saith the Lord. Now, before I get into this, of course, we've been in tongues again, but I like to be sure and, and, and mention this over and over and over again. I'm not an enemy of those with tongues. I'm a friend of God's, which means I stand with God. And so when I, I, I know that there are people that take this different ways, so I'm sorry if it offends you, but I'm standing on the word of God. If that means we've got to be enemies, then so be it. I'm a friend of God. I'm going to preach the word of God just like God lays on my heart, just like he reveals from scripture, just like he has led me through my studies. I'm not your enemy. I'm trying to admonish you to walk according to the word of God, not according to the flesh. Um, so look at this for a minute. And, and let, let me, Paul knew that there were people of a bad nature and he understood the nature of those with a bad nature or immaturity, if you would, um, they had wrong thinking, and, and they, they were unashamed to do wrong. You know, if you don't realize that wrong is wrong, it doesn't bother you to do wrong. You don't, you don't blush. And some people, by searing their hearts, are that way. Uh, let me stop for a second and, 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 and just say this. Um, what makes an adult? What makes them mature? You know, just because I'm, I'm, I'm 60 years old, that doesn't make me mature. Uh, it makes me an adult, but doesn't make me mature. Maturity is uh, comes from understanding and reasoning, and and that's coupled with um, experience and soundness of mind. And so, as we put those things together and rightly, we, it brings us to a place where we can say, "Okay, we are mature in this area. I can handle uh, this situation maturely." Hey, there's some situations today. If you're telling myself, oh, "I don't know if I can handle that," I'm not ready for it. Um, uh, but those uh, that are mature, uh, they 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 get a, they get knowledge, they assimilate it, and they um uh, and once that's understood, they apply it to their life, and that's part of that assimilation, understanding and applying it to life. That changes us. Um, well, you know, a little kid puts his hand on the stove, it burns him. And you said, "I told you, no, it's hot." Next time you say hot, he's Hmm, he's thinking about it. 
He's maturing. He's still a kid. But he's gathering that knowledge. He's assimilating it. And then he's applying it to life. And I hope you do that all your life. When you stop doing that, you got a problem. Okay? But we haven't arrived. We're not going to arrive until we get into heaven and kneel before the throne. Okay? All right. With that said, those in ministry must have, and catch this, a character of maturity in all areas. It simply means a character of maturity. They need to be growing. They need to be uh, assimilating this knowledge and, and, and understanding what it means and then applying it to their life. See, that you just don't go, la, 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 la. You don't do that with the Word of God. It, it's, a, it's an active relationship with God. So, if you, don't, if you have a lack of benevolence to the Word of God, that's harmful to you. It's harmful to your local church. It's harmful to the whole body of Christ. It ruins our testimony. Um, Paul knew, even in the Old Testament there, uh, law, there were things written people were not willing to obey. And we're going to get into that directly. But give me, uh, let me say a few things before we get there. Now, these men that uh, he's referring to here in 21, um, were Israelites, and basically they had rejected God's word and authority, and they were placing their own authority over God's, and that's what we do. Listen to me real close. Uh, when you uh, reject the word of God, what you simply do is you hear it, but you just, it's nothing to you. I, I, I know what to do. I, I'm an adult. I can do this. There will always people that reject God's authority over them by rejecting the word of God. It'll always happen. So Paul understood these men were rejecting God's word just as, and I'm talking about these in 14, were rejecting God's word just as in Isaiah's day. So let's go to Isaiah. Oh boy, I thought I said it wrong. Chapter 28, Isaiah chapter 28. And I want you to, to catch this real good because I've got a little uh, explaining to do. In Isaiah, am I saying that right, honey? I feel like I'm saying it wrong. I must be getting old. I'm sorry. Uh, it says in verse 11, chapter 28, verse 11, it says, For with stammering lips and another tongue will he speak to this people, to whom he said, This is the rest, wherewith ye may cause the weary to rest, and this is the refreshing, but they would not hear. But And I'll just say 13, But the word of the Lord was unto them precept upon precept. What are we talking about? I want you to get this. Well, when you're talking about uh, for with stammering lips, we're, we're talking about mocking and ridicule. That's what that word means there. In another tongue, in a foreign tongue or foreign language. These people that he's talking about here were the people of, uh, of Ephraim and the children of God. And these people were had gotten prideful. They got drunk and, and they were denying the word of God and they were denying God. And God says, okay, I'm going to send you into captivity. And he sent them to Babylon. That's what this is referring to. When you go back and you look in, in 21, it's talk about in the law it is written with men of other tongues and other lips will I speak unto this people. He's telling you, I'm sending you into captivity. They're going to ridicule you. They're going to run you down. But then, remember I told you I wanted to call your attention to these words again. It says, yet for all that, yet because of the captivity in Babylon, yet because they these people were ridiculing them in tongues they didn't even understand, they said, yet for all that, they will not hear me. They were not willing to repent. God sent them into captivity. There were people that died there because they would not repent. Seventy years they spent there. You understand what I'm saying? And if you talk to people that believe in tongues, they say, well, this is proof of tongues. No, it's not. It's proof that tongues are used to the unbeliever. That's the principle. He sent them into captivity where they wouldn't understand. And those people would ridicule them, and they would not hearken unto God. They were wicked and vile. See, Paul understood these men were rejecting God's word, just as in Hosea's day. And, and, and to reject the word of God, when you reject the, word, reject the word of God, you reject his authority. But not only that, you reject the salvation of God. There are people out there today in unbelief. They've rejected God. They've rejected witnessing. They've rejected every, every, everything we've done to try to... To, to win them the Christ. They rejected God's authority and they will have at that point rejected his salvation. They will die and go to hell. See, that's what, that, what we're looking at right here. Uh, the problem with the authority of man, unfortunately, is it's unable to save him from eternal torments. 
Only God can do that. But they have rejected his, so they've rejected his salvation. Here, if you look back and, and you look at the other verses in, in Isaiah, uh, you find out in this, it's other places, and I didn't write them all down, but in other places we come to understand that God's word refreshes the people. It refreshes them by giving them rest. It refreshes them by giving them peace with God and man. And see, these people have denied, they've rejected. They're not going to have peace. Those people in Isaiah, they weren't going to have it because they were in a foreign land in captivity. Those people were ridiculing them. They weren't going to get the peace. They weren't going to get the rest. They rejected God's word. Just as today, we find the same truth, rejecting God's word. See, God sent the messenger with a message for the people, but it's always on the people to receive it. It's always them that have to accept. And you can refuse the message, but refusing the messenger, um, well, let me rephrase that. You can re you can refuse the message, but that's not refusing the messenger. That's rejecting God, or the God of the message, if you would. Um, I, at this stage, uh, as a preacher and teacher of the Word of God, I'm just the messenger. That's all I am. Uh, you can you you can reject me. It doesn't matter. I am called to the same obedience to God, to the same faith in God as anybody else, just as the listeners out there today are. Uh, there's no difference. Uh, I'm called to faith and obedience. You're called to faith and obedience. That's your response. Uh, and you have to do as, as, as you would, but God's going to judge you for those actions. Probably didn't say that right. So in, in Isaiah 28, 11 through 12, we see that it reveals when God's word is rejected, there will be judgment from God. And God sent his people into Babylon uh, uh, among a people of an unknown tongue. We mentioned that. Uh, these Babylonians didn't have respect. They, they ridiculed the Israelites. It was a language they did not and could not understand. Um, what a terrible situation to be put into when you don't understand everybody ridicules you. I've been in that before overseas a little bit. Um, and it's not, it's not fun. You know, it's... Let me just say this before I move on. This is how Israel had treated God. They neither had respect toward him or his word. Their lack of respect toward God was just this. They could not understand him. Uh, Israel was, because of that, was delivered into hand of the enemies because they rejected God. Uh, take heed. Take heed. When you, when you reject God, he will do just that. He will deliver you up. The last point. Is 22, the lack of believers with mature understanding is harmful uh, to the body. And uh, I guess we see that a little bit in 21, but let's go in 22. Uh, and this actually opens up what I was telling you before. Wherefore, tongues are for a sign, not to them that believe, but to them that believe not. When they were sitting to Babylon, the reason they went there was judgment. Because they didn't believe in God, they didn't follow after him. So they heard tongues, foreign languages. They were in captivity. If they would have been faithful to God, if they'd have believed in God, served him, they'd have never heard those foreign tongues surrounding them. They'd have been in their own city if they ever heard them. The people would have been hearing their tongue as foreign. You understand? But judgment sent them there. That's the principle we're going on. Um, but to them that believe not, it wasn't to not to them that believe, but to them that believe not. But prophesying serveth not for them that believe not, but for them which believe. Uh, I believe, um, as Paul stated here, these people rejected God, and it was because of their unbelief. He sent them in this captivity. And the tongues of the foreigners, I believe, the scripture tells me, was a sign to remind them that they had rejected God. Uh, this was a reminder uh, that when we reject God, uh, he will deliver us to our tormentors. I, I, I may mention that. This is a reminder to those that seek to be in a positions that God has not called them. Be careful. You, you, you're going against the will of God. You're rejecting his will for your life when you seek things he didn't desire for you. What happens when we're separated from God? Have you ever thought about that? Well, the scripture tells us uh, there are people that uh, were wicked, and he said, Deliver such a one to Satan for the destruction of the flesh. I think that's what happened. When they were delivered into Babylon, do you think that was to the destruction of the flesh? 
Oh my goodness. You better believe it was. But what would it could it have done spiritually for them if they had repented? And there were those that repented. Don't get me wrong, there were those. See, God allows destruction of a person's health for the sole reason to bring them to repentance or to bring somebody to repentance. He's doing what he does in our lives to grow us. You know, I've, I've told you uh, I've had um, severe pains in my left leg for quite a while. I've been very hard to uh, to walk and, and things. And, and it's, it's kind of floppy right now. I've actually had a real good day today and not so bad yesterday. Um, it walks out pretty quick in the morning. But, you know, I have to look at that pain, and, and, and as severe as it is, I have to know that God did it for a reason. And that reason is good for me spiritually. Uh, and do I like it? No, no. I pray you take it. Uh, but there's an understanding there. Um, with that said, <coughs> when we're talking about a person's health and his life, it's, it's much better to destroy a, a life living for the devil than to allow that life to destroy others. So anyway, that was a little off topic. Uh, because this the, of this truth, what we've just talked about with tongues, uh, this truth, tongues are a sign to them that don't believe in God. In Paul's day, I think we need to understand that tongues were still spiritual gifts uh, to spread the word of God uh, to all the world. Um, they were given by him originally uh, by the spirit of God in order that men never hearing of God's word could hear in their own language. And, and, and Paul makes mention of that uh, repeatedly. And today, tongues are not a gift of the Spirit. Uh, people, um, well, it's just not a gift of the Spirit because we have the complete Word of God. Um, if you're going to learn tongues, if you're going to learn a foreign language, it's going to be by intellect and study. You're going to have to apply yourself. Um, but anyway, that, uh, as I mentioned, that example in the Old Testament it sets the biblical principle for the usage of tongues is for unbelief, not for believers. Um, however, this verse ends up and says, but prophesying serveth not for them that believe not, but for them that which believe. The ability to expound the word of God, that's what prophesying is, is not for the unbeliever, but is for believers. Um, the unbeliever needs to accept Jesus Christ as personal savior more than he needs Bible exposition. Now, Bible exposition um, is a wonderful thing, but still, uh, that's not what he needs. Now, in the process of hearing that, he may catch something by the Spirit of God, and he may get saved, but that's not going to do him really the good it's going to do the believer, because there's no indwelling spirit. Um, the lost, first of all, need to be saved to grow, because, uh, but the believer needs the Word of God, but they need to be saved to grow. Um, Can I just say this? The unsaved, the unbeliever, he doesn't really care about deep things of God um, because he really doesn't believe. Uh, they don't care uh, because there is no spirit of God indwelling them. Uh, the interest anyone has in the spiritual, it, it all comes through the indwelling of the Holy Spirit in us. And, and I think that's why God give that. How do you mature in Christ? Oh, that's all of your own? No, it's not. It's by the indwelling spirit. Um, and that's why a lot of times when I talk with people, they claim to be Christian. Okay, well, then as I get to talking to them, I find out that there's no depth to what they know. They believe things um, all obscure. And I get really nervous because where is the spirit of God working and illuminating the truth in their lives? Uh, this is a problem. Uh, where is Where are they getting this uh, stuff? Um, Maybe they're saved, maybe they're not. Our job as believers is to help the lost hear the word of God. They're not going to hear it unless we're faithful in soul winning, faithful in preaching and teaching. Uh, but I guess the bottom line is here, and I'm getting ready to close out. The bottom line is really um, no one can grow in the spirit without understanding the teachings of the Bible. And nobody can understand the teachings of the Bible if they don't have the indwelling spirit. There's nothing there to illumine you if you're just a natural man. You've never been saved. It's by the working, excuse me, it's by the word of God and the working of the Holy Spirit that men grow in Christ. They have to have those two things. They have to have the word of God and they have to have the work of the Holy Spirit. 
Uh, if you don't have that, if you're not taking time to read the Word of God, where's the Word of God in your life? You say, well, you're saved, but you're not growing. Well, I guarantee you, if you're saved, if you're really saved, you're not growing, I can tell you why. If you're reading the Word of God and you're not growing, I can tell you why. Well, I think I can tell you why. Because you're not saved. There's people that think they're saved that's just not saved. Um, I'm going to go ahead and close. Uh, and I just, in the conclusion here, I, I, I do not believe Christians today uh, think very much about what their actions may do to others. Um, I think uh, if you have any access to news articles, uh, you just take a little time and read, and soon you'll find out uh, about the lack of discipline, um, first of all, with our tongues, uh, as well as just about in any area of life that you can name. Um, people just don't seem to care about their fellow man. Um, they don't seem uh, to worry about the worldly problems. Well, well, I tell you, the thing, there's so much I want to say. I'm letting my thoughts run. Let me just say this. The problem that we see in the world, this worldly issue, is, is, is a problem that we're seeing in the church because the problems in the world are, are, are in the natural man, in humans, and we have humans in the church, and, and we're, we're saturated by the things of this world. Uh, yeah, I think it's very relevant that we look here in this passage of Scripture and through Corinthians, we find the problems they're having in Corinthians, we're still having today. They had them then, we have them now. Um, if Paul had them, and it was especially a big issue, I think, in this church, uh, and the fact that the Holy Spirit placed his letter, First and Second Corinthians, in the Word of God with these issues that Paul was dealing with at Corinth, um, it tells me that God knew we were going to deal with these same things today. And so he placed this in the Word of God for us, that we might have the same admonition that they had, and we need it. Do we not? Um, so I guess as I leave you today, I'm just going to ask you, what you could do with the knowledge uh, that God has given you, the admonition that he's given you from this passage today? Uh, will you heed the warnings? Will you uh, be stiff-necked like the Israelites and, and and place your flesh in this desire for God and his will? Well, I hope not. I would hope that you would take heed. Um, but I hope you do realize the seriousness of a lack of understanding spiritual truths, that you understand the, the harm that you cause uh, others uh, and to the, the church when you have a lack of benevolence or goodwill towards God. Um, I hope also that you understand that uh, you have the ability to change either one of those. You have the ability to be a mature or a maturing person in Christ. That's really your call. You, know, you want to spend time in the Word of God. Uh, you want to, 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 to get your heart right with God. That's all on you. Um, those two things, if you get them right, will help you to mature that you might be a blessing to the, the house of God. Um, that it's on you. You're accountable to God for it. So the question is, what you going to do? Are you going to repent, or are you going to go your own way? Let's pray. Now, Father, we thank you again for this day. We thank you for each and every one that's able to be here. We ask now, the Lord, for your blessings, your guidance, and direction. In Jesus' name, amen. And I'll just mention one more time before we leave, in case anybody was late to join us. We will be meeting uh, Sunday at church, but it will be outside. The class variance has been changed. And uh, we do plan on having the Lord's Supper. Uh, I will be calling a few people tomorrow that are not on uh, the group uh, and make sure they understand and know what we're um, doing. So uh, God bless, and we will see you Sunday.